Drawing a magical beetle is easier than you think, and I'm going to show you exactly how you can do it, no matter your skill level. Hello, info people! It's Genevieve, and my goal here on this channel is to teach you all about illustration and design. So if you're new, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any of the weekly videos, and so that you can join our wonderful creative community. And with that said, grab your drawing tools, and let's get started. So as usual, we are going to start by opening up Procreate and creating a new canvas so that we have somewhere to draw. For reference, uh, these are the dimensions I will be using. It is literally just the size of my iPad screen because I'm just doing a demo. But make sure you take the time to find dimensions that work for your own project requirements. Now, if you're not exactly sure how to pick a canvas size, I have a video in which I teach you everything you need to know in order to make your decision. So I will link that in the description below. Now, I also often get the question on how to add the little reference image on the top. So if you go in the wrench icon menu, in the canvas sub menu, you're going to have the option to activate the little reference toggle here, and that's going to let you import a picture. Now, if you want to use my beetle as a reference, there's a link in the description below where you can download it for free. The first thing we're going to do is set the background to a nice dark charcoal gray, so a neutral gray. And that's totally optional, but if you want, the color palette that I'm going to be using in this video is also linked in the description below. It's free, it comes with the Beetle illustration, so you can download them both. But otherwise, you can definitely pick your own colors. It's very simple here, and you can be super creative. So one thing we need to do before we start drawing is activating the symmetry, so what we draw on one side automatically gets recreated on the other side. So for that, go in the wrench icon menu, still in the canvas submenu, you're going to activate Drawing Guide. And to make sure that we have the right guides, go ahead and select Edit Drawing Guides. So here it's going to open up a few options at the bottom. The main one that you absolutely need to make sure you have activated is the symmetry, so the one on the right. And if you click then on the options, you're going to select Vertical Symmetries. So as long as you have vertical symmetry, you're good to go. The other options just affect the visuals of the guide. So you could select a different color. I'm going to go with just something super intense to make sure that you guys can see well on the video, but you can really pick whatever you want. So I'm going to go with, I don't know, uh, full opacity, super thickness, red line. Then you can exit that mode and you're going to see you're going to have this line. Now this line is not going to be in the final result, of course, but everything we draw on one side of the line is going to be repeated automatically on the other side. But for that to happen, we need to set up our layers in a specific way. So for now, just go ahead, create a new layer, rename it to body, then tap on it again to open the layer menu and select drawing assist at the bottom. If you did it right, you're going to see assisted written under the layer name. And you need to do that for every layer you want symmetry on, otherwise the symmetry is just not going to be applied. So activating drawing assist is super, super important. And in this video, I'm always going to be suggesting two different kinds of brushes. One is going to be a free brush that comes with Procreate and is going to allow you to follow the tutorial totally fine. This video is really not about specific brushes, but the other brushes are going to be brushes from my Ultimate Illustration Bundle. Now, I want to make that very, very clear. They're not essential at all, but they might help you just save some time and get more professional results overall. So if you do want to check them out, there will be a link in the description below, and there's always a special promo code for the YouTube people. But again, they're not essential. So we're going to start the beetle by just mapping out the different body parts. And for that, you could go ahead and use in the sketching panel, so the brushes that come with Procreate, the 6B pencil. It's a really nice pencil that has some grit to it and it's a bit thicker than the HB pencil. But if you do have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. Now here, you're going to pick the base color you want your beetle to be. So I'm gonna go with a not too dark, but not too light either nice just blue but you could go with whatever you want and you can see if you draw on one side it's automatically repeating on the other one so that's super super helpful and we're simply going to start by drawing the body so it should be an oval and this oval can be as thick as thin as you want now on top of the body you can also draw the head same thing as thick as thin as you want you can really play with the proportions of your beetle here and take the time to experiment uh, you know it's okay if you have a bunch of lines just make sure that at the end when you're happy with the shape all the lines are well connected so that you can fill them in just by dropping your color on the section 
And here, since we're using brushes that have some grit and texture to it, you're probably going to need to adjust the threshold when you drop your color. So for that, instead of just releasing, so lifting up your pencil once you drop your color onto a shape, just keep it on the screen and then you can play with this number here to tell the color drop threshold by moving your pencil towards the right or towards the left. So you're going to want to find the moment right before the color fills in the entire canvas and then that's when you release your pencil. So just make sure that at this stage you like the shape of the body and the head. So sometimes when you draw outlines and then fill in the silhouette, you know, the silhouette doesn't look as good as the outlines. So feel free to tweak anything you need at this stage. And then we're going to move on to adding any extra element you want on the head. So there are so many different kind of beetles that have different kind of antennas and horns and mandibles. So you can really have fun here and draw your own beetle. You can also invent it. I'm gonna go with a very, very big mendable kind of shapes and then this horn thingy. I really don't know what they're called, but y y you know what I mean. <laughs> so the same thing here, you just start with the outline, making sure that they're fully closed and then just filling in the shape, adjusting the threshold as needed. Awesome. So once you have the body, the head with all the different elements you want, we're going to map out the wings and all the other body parts. But for that, we're going to create separate layers so that later we can add the shadows and the patterns really easily. So just go ahead and create a new layer above the body layer. We named this one Two Wings. And don't forget to activate Drawing Assist. You're going to see throughout this video, I keep forgetting to activate it, so please be better than me. <laughs> But yeah, you can draw whatever shape you want for the wings once more. You can really experiment and customize your own beetle. I'm going to go with wings that are slightly curvy and kind of in two parts, almost like butterfly wings, honestly. But you could go with super thin, very almost pointy wings or wings that are like teardrop shapes or super round wings. Really here, it's the same technique. So we just draw the outline and fill it in, but you can really play with the shape. And if you're not super inspired and you want to do something different than me, don't hesitate to just Google beetle or beetle wing or something like that. And you're gonna get a bunch of ideas. So once you have the wings, you could go ahead and create a new layer above the wings layer. We named this one to Elytra. Now the Elytra is, I guess, kind of the hard shell on top of the beetle. Um, and you can see here, I forgot to activate uh, drawing assist. So I'll do that in a second. But you're going to pick a lighter version of your base color. So for the Elytra, <laughs> there you go, I'm going to activate drawing assist. But for the Elytra, essentially what you're going to draw is two ovals that would cover the size of the the body. So starting where the, the neck, I know beetles don't have neck, but the connection between the head and the body, starting that there, and then just two ovals are roughly the same length of the body itself. And then you can create a new layer below the body this time, and this one you're going to rename to legs, activating drawing assist as well. With the same color you use for the Elytra, so just a lighter version of your base color, you're going to draw the legs. Now for the legs, I like to just draw them with a bunch of very rounded triangles, I guess, or very just ovals. So just a bunch of the little sections kind of stacking on top of each other with the top section being more like a claw. And essentially I'm drawing three legs. So one at the top where the head connects with the body, one that is kind of hidden by the wings, and then one at the very bottom of the body. Awesome. So with that, we have all the different body parts. We're almost ready to start shading and adding the pattern. But before that, we're going to go back on the Elytra layer and with two fingers, swipe it to the right to activate Alpha Lock. Now you can also activate Alpha Lock by just tapping on the layer and selecting it in the menu. And that's going to make it so that everything we draw now on this Elytra layer is going to stay within the base shape we already have. And you're going to pick a color analogous to your base color. So either on the left or on the right in the kind of color strip, I'm going to go with a green and make sure it's super bright as well. And if you're working with the free brushes, you're going to stick with the 6B pencil. Otherwise, if you're working with the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the basic texture brush. Now at this stage, all we're going to do is add a bit more dimension on the Elytra because you know beetles usually are kind of shiny. So you're just going to add this highlight towards the inner part of the beetle. And if you're working with the basic texture brush, go ahead and tilt your pencil so that it's almost flat with the screen. That way you're going to get just better results. 
You're also going to activate alpha lock on the wings and the body layer so we can add more details on this. And you're going to start by selecting the wings layer and just drawing a very nice thick line at the top of the wings. Now, depending on the wing shape you drew, obviously you might want to not do that or do it differently, but that's, that's what I'm going to do. And one last little thing, you might go ahead on the body layer and highlight the top of the head to make it shiny as well. Awesome! So that was really it for the base. So nothing too complicated as you can see, and you can really already customize your beetle even with just the base. But now we have that, we're going to add a few shadows just to make it pop a little bit more. It's not going to be this crazy realistic 3D feel, but it's definitely going to be less flat than what we have right now. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the body, rename this one to shadow and apply it as a clipping mask. So just tapping on the layer and then selecting clipping mask in the menu. And what that does is now everything we draw on the shadow layer is going to stay within the shape of the body, even though it's on a separate layer. So that way we can change the blending mode of that layer. For now, we're going to set it to linear burn and also lower the opacity of the layer for now around 50%. And linear burn is great because whatever color you use to paint with linear burn is going to look darker and it's going to blend really nicely with your base color. So for shadow, it's absolutely fantastic. And speaking of color here, you can pick really whatever color you want for your shadows. The only thing I would recommend is to try avoiding neutral grays because then your shadows with linear burn would look a little bit muddy. So I tend to go with a gray that has a bit of purple to it. And in terms of the placement for your shadows, you can really experiment. I'm going with little lines like this to divide the body in sections and then gently pressing on my pencil and tilting it towards the screen. I'm kind of blending the lines downwards so that the sections are not as harsh. They're more kind of uh, gradient, I guess. But again, you can really experiment in creating different kind of patterns on the body. But one thing you definitely want to do is create a shadow be below the elytras because, you know, they would be casting a shadow on the body. So that's one thing that you absolutely should do. If you have any special feature, I guess, on the head, so any horn, mandible, antennas, anything like that, you could go ahead and make sure that they're clearly separated from the head by adding a shadow. So you can experiment with that. And maybe shading the head as well. So the very, very edges of the head where the elytras are overlapping. And you can see what I meant earlier when I said we're not necessarily going for a super realistic 3D feel, but it just does add a lot more texture to a piece and makes it feel way less flat, although it's not, you know, realistic. You can also go back and play with the opacity of your shadow layer as much as needed. And once you're happy with it, go ahead and create a new layer, this time above the wings layer, rename this one to shadow as well, and apply it as a clipping mask too. Don't forget to set the blending mode to linear burn and lower the opacity around 50% for now. Now you might be asking yourself here why I'm not activating drawing assist to have the symmetry. This is, uh, we're gonna activate symmetry back when we draw the patterns, but I really like to draw the shadows without symmetry because when you think about it, shadows are usually not symmetrical because the light source is really, you know, right above in the specific middle of the piece. It tends to be off to one side. So I like to draw the shadows just by hand. So without the symmetry to make the piece feel a little bit less perfectly symmetrical that just has a weird like odd vibe to it so that's that's just my one little tip but you could go ahead definitely and draw shadows with the symmetry activated if you want and for the wings i didn't really specify what i'm doing but basically the wings the shadows on them are going to depend on the shape that you have for your wings so if you have the same shape go ahead and copy the shadows i'm doing otherwise you can experiment shouldn't be too complicated here and once you've shaded your wings, go ahead and create a new shadow layer, this time right above uh, the legs. You're also going to apply this as a clipping mask on the legs. You're going to set the blending modes to linear burn and lower opacity around 50% once more. And in terms of the shading for the leg, there are a few different areas that you're probably going to want to focus on. So wherever the body overlap the legs, you want to add a shadow there. And then between every little section of leg. So it's really not complicated, but it's going to make the legs feel so much better than just the weird kind of blobs that they are right now. So here, feel free to pause the video to take all the time you need to shade the different sections. I'm personally not going to be shading the elytras, by the way, because they're on top and they already have a lot of light. But yeah, feel free to pause the video, shade all the different sections, and don't hesitate to go back and play with the opacity of the different shadows layer until you like the blending of everything. 
And just a quick note here, if you don't have a lot of layers available in your Procreate, at this stage you could go ahead and merge the different body parts with their shadows, so like the legs and the legs shadows. And to do that, you just squish the layers with two fingers. So you want to make sure though that the different body parts are still separated. You don't want to have one big layer, but you could go ahead and merge the shadows as needed. I personally like to keep my layers separated for as long as I can in case I just want to change something later down the road. It just makes everything easier. So once you're happy with your shading on the beetle, go ahead and create a new layer below everything, so below the legs, and rename this one to Background Shadows. You're also going to use the blending mode linear burn for that, and you probably guessed it, lower the opacity around 50% for now, but we can always go back and tweak it later, that's the beauty of layers. And here with the same brush and same color, we're actually going to add a shadow below the beetle. So it's kind of hard to see on the screen here, but essentially what that's going to do is make the beetle feel like it's slightly elevated because I, for example, like the belly would be a bit round, so the beetle would not be exactly flush on the surface. So, you know, it has a bit of realism there, although we're not going for realism, but it also helps the beetle look a bit more contrasted from the background. So it just helps make the piece feel a bit more legible. So what you might want to do here is focusing your shadows on one side of the beetle. So here I'm pretending that my light source is slightly on the left, which means my shadows are always going to be on the, the right. But honestly, you could just go ahead and almost outline your entire beetle in shadows if you wanted to. Here it's really not a question of precision. Again, it's just a quick little step that's going to make a big difference in the end, just in terms of the contrast, not in terms of the realism. Okay, now we're at the fun part. We're going to add all the patterns and details to make this beetle actually look fun. So for that, go ahead and create a new layer above the Elytra. Rename this one to Pattern, and you're also going to apply it as a clipping mask on the Elytra. Now, that was the reason why we wanted to keep all the different body parts separated so that we could apply the patterns as clipping masks as well, so we don't have to worry about going at the different shapes. And for the patterns here, you could really use any color of your choice. I'm going with straight up white. I think that's just a nice contrast. And you can stick with the 6B pencil for that. It's going to work really well. Or if you have the illustration brushes, go ahead and pick the outlines brush. And you might have noticed that, as I said earlier in the video, I forgot to activate drawing assist. So make sure you don't forget. <laughs> go back on your patterns layer and activate drawing assist so that what we draw on one side is automatically duplicated on the other side. And here, in terms of patterning, there are so many different options. You could really go ahead and experiment and customize, personalize your own beetle with just your own specific patterns. I'm gonna go with more of a almost magical, witchy vibe, maybe a little bit with Mexican inspiration. I know I'm kind of going all over the place right now, but basically very simple petal or leaf shapes, a bunch of tiny dots, some circles, and even later, as you're going to see, a skull. So really here, the main goal is to kind of think of it as a mandala. So you're going to pick a few basic shapes and stick with those shapes and then just combine them in different ways until you fill out the specific area that you're working on at the moment. So here again, you can totally go ahead and do your own thing, or you can copy what I'm doing. Whatever you want is totally fine. You know, you can experiment or just play safe and do the same shapes as I'm doing in the same spots as I am doing. And with that, it is time for the secret password. So if you watched this final video, please go ahead and leave a comment with the color you are using for your beetle. So in my case, I would say blue. And the thing with secret password is I know a lot of people like to, to do that little game, finding the, the password in the, the video. But the main thing is it gives me a lot of insight into how to edit and pace my videos better, which helps me create every time better tutorials for you guys. So that's really super important. And it's also very cool because you guys know me, you see my face in the intro, hear my voice throughout the entire video, but I have no idea who you guys are. And whenever you leave a comment, whatever the comment is, I get to see sometimes your name, sometimes your face, or even just a, a pseudonym and that's, you know, that's fine. Um, but yeah, it's just really cool to see who's part of the creative community that we're building here on this channel. So just leave a comment with whichever color you're using for the beetle and we're going to keep adding patterns. We're going to move on to the body next. Awesome, so once you have the patterns on the Elytras, you can go ahead and create a new layer above the body. And this one you wanna make sure that is below the shadows, so that way the shadows are applied to the patterns as well. 
And once more, you might notice that I forgot to activate drawing assist. I'm going to realize that in a second right here. <laughs> so make sure that you activate drawing assist on that layer if you want to have the symmetry, which we probably do. So just go ahead, activate that. And here, if you want to draw like me, I'm going to draw a skull. So kind of a circle with then a rounded rectangle at the bottom for the jaw. And yeah, I mean, it's really not super complicated. For now, I'm just going to fill that shape in and leave it as is and to come back later with the eraser to add the eyes and everything. So I'm just going to map out the shapes around the skull. But yeah, if, if you want to draw a skull, that might be fun. Otherwise, again, you can experiment and draw whatever you want. And here, I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on drawing the different patterns on the head. And we're going to meet up in the next step where we're going to work on the little skull um, details. So I'm going to speed up my video, but I'm going to keep it in the background so you can use it as a reference. And we're going to meet up in just a few seconds. Awesome! So once you have the details on the head, you might want to go back in your layer panel and lower the opacity of your patterns a little bit because the head in theory should be darker than the elytras, so the pattern should not be as bright as the elytras. You can experiment here, I'm going with around 50%, but that's going to depend on your base color and just a bunch of factors, so make sure that it works for your own piece, of course. Now here, you're going to match your eraser to the brush you use for drawing. So if you're using free brushes, use the 6B pencil as your eraser. And if you're using the illustration bundle, set your eraser to the eraser shape. And then at this stage, all you can do is go and add some details on the skull. So big round eyes might be super cute, then some sort of a mouth with little vertical lines for teeth. And if you want, you can also add details on the skull itself. So like little spirals for, for the nose, that could be fun. And if we really lean into the Mexican inspiration, so, you know, Dia de Muertos, you could go ahead and draw the kind of flower patterns and circles and dots on the skull itself. So you're kind of mirroring the pattern you have on the beetle and adding simplified versions of those on the skull just so it integrates better with the rest. But also you don't have to draw a skull. If you don't want, you could draw like a moon or just a flower. You can really draw so many different things and really, really customize your beetle to your own taste. I was just feeling like a skull today, I guess. <laughs> And while we're working with white on the uh, clipping mask that is applied to the body, you might want to go ahead and add a bit more texture and just details, I guess, on the antennas, horns, menables, whatever you have on your head. You might want to go back and just add a bit more dimensions. Dimension, that's the word I was looking for. So just highlighting some parts of it to make it more interesting, not necessarily drawing patterns on it because that's a bit too intense, but just making sure that it's not blending and disappearing in the background. And if you wanted, you could also add some patterns on the body itself. So not the head, but really the body that would be usually hidden below the elytras. Um, but if you do that, make sure that it's not overwhelming because this body needs, well, it doesn't need to, but I think personally, it looks better if this is not the main part of your beetle because you know that's kind of a beetle that has the wings open and the leecher is open like it's about to fly away but usually beetles the patterns that they have not that we're drawing anything realistic right now we literally have a skull in the beetle but the patterns tend to be focused on the elytras so when the beetle is not flying away you know that's where you see most of the patterns so this section of the beetle usually would be hidden that's that's essentially what I'm trying to say. So we want to make sure that it's not stealing away from the rest of the insect. So we're just going to draw some very simple patterns. If you do want to have patterns, I'm just going to go with tiny little dots, but honestly, you could just leave it plain. That would be totally fine as well. One section that we do want to have patterns on though is the wings. So you're going to create a new layer between the wing shadows and the wings themselves. So it's also going to be an automatic clipping mask. And you can also rename this one to patterns. Now here, if you want, you can experiment using the blending mode overlay and lowering the opacity around 50%. It's going to just make the patterns look a little bit more interesting because they're going to blend differently with the, the wings. So as opposed to just being pure white, they're probably going to be just a lighter version of your base color. So that's just interesting as a bit of interest without, you know, using a completely different color. Now here, don't forget to use, of course, drawing assist if you want the symmetry. And yeah, you can just like the rest of 
of the beetle draw really whatever you want in terms of pattern. Once more, if you want to draw exactly the same patterns as I do, don't hesitate to just copy what I'm doing. Otherwise, I'm going to stop talking to let you focus on creating your patterns. I'm going to speed up my video so it doesn't last forever. And then we're going to meet the next step. We're going to work on the background a little bit. Awesome. So you can see super simple on the wings. I don't want to overwhelm them. I think it's good because we already have a lot going on. So just keeping them simple, but still, you know, having a bit of pattern to make them interesting as well. And once you're done with the wings, we're going to go ahead and group all of the layers except for the background shadows. So just swapping them with one finger towards the right and then clicking group. You can then rename your group to beetle and collapse it by clicking on the arrow next to the check mark. So that way your file is just going to be much more organized. You can then create a new layer, put it below the background shadow layer, so below everything, and rename this one to background details. Now here we don't want the background details to be too intense, so you might want to go ahead and lower the opacity for now. 50% is good, but you can always, you know, come back and tweak it later. And then just like for everything else, you know, we can just draw whatever pattern we want at this stage but like you probably guessed it already <laughs> i forgot to activate drawing assist so don't forget activate drawing assist if you want to use the symmetry now what i personally like to do here is to draw a few circles or a few whatever shape you've been using if you were using i don't know triangles or hearts or whatever you would draw those shapes along the symmetry line itself to really clearly show that symmetry line and put the emphasis on it i don't know why but i think it just looks super super good then all i'm going to do is draw the same kind of basic shapes so in my case kind of leaf shapes and circle everywhere until i am happy with the composition and honestly i'm going to also add I guess variations of my little leaves or petals I'm going to draw actual branches and that way i feel i just i just like the organic vibe it adds to the piece so if you want to do that all you have to do is first map out the branches so maybe you know three on each side three five an odd number usually is better in terms of composition and then you can just add the same petal or leaf shape but following you know the, the branch so it's super simple and you can add also a very thin tiny line in the very middle to make it look more like a leaf if that's what you're going for And when you're done mapping out everything, don't forget to go back in your layer panel to play with the opacity of that layer so you light the blending of everything. I'm going to lower mine quite down, so like 14%. So it's still there, but really the focus remains on the beetle itself. Now at this stage, all you have to do is go and deactivate the drawing guide toggle so you don't have that ugly vertical line anymore, and that's it. And if you enjoyed this video and want to learn how to create more illustrations in Procreate, I highly recommend you check out this playlist in which I'm going to teach you exactly that. But before we leave, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of the weekly videos I post every Tuesday and Saturday. Then click on the link right here and I'll meet you there.